I learned one of the most valuable lessons ever from a Bassmasters Classic Champ and this little lure. Hi there, welcome to The Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Hey, before the video gets going, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and punch that notification bell. We put out new videos three times per week, all year long, and make sure you head on over to our new blog site as well, thebassfishinglife.com. Thank you so very much. Well, I've talked about in previous videos that one of the things that makes this sport so great is the fact that we are always learning. The older you get, the more knowledge that you amass, you're always applying new tips and tricks to put out there on the water and catch more fish. And one of the best ways to do that is to fish with other people. Well, I had a chance many years ago, as a matter of fact, I believe this episode was filmed in 2002, back when I was doing television, I had a chance to fish with Mark Davis, and he had just won his third Angler of the Year in a total of seven years, and he had also won the Bassmasters Classic in 1995, a year that he won Angler of the Year and the Classic in the same year. So just crazy. So I had a chance to meet up with him on his home lake in Lake Washita in central Arkansas. And I have to tell you what, he taught me one of the most important lessons that as an angler I have ever learned and it has to do with offshore fishing and this particular bait right here. It is something that has stuck with me for the next almost 20 years and I've tried to pass this knowledge on to others as well. And we're gonna take a quick look back. Now don't laugh when you see the footage. This is before high definition. I mean, it's still a four by three from way back in the early 2000s. But we're gonna go ahead and roll just a small segment of this footage so you can see what Mark is trying to teach me and what we actually filmed this particular episode episode on. So let's go ahead and roll that right now. Steve, we're taking it. What we've done here is looked at, the, looked at this um, ledge with the depth finder. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see the top of it. It's 12 feet. Yeah. And a lot of the areas we're going to fish are going to be 10 to 12 on top. And then coming off in the river channel, which is around 20 to 25 feet. Now, the lure I've selected that I'm going to try to start out with is going to be the, the Strike King Series 5. But this is what I think we can catch them on this afternoon. And uh, Got a couple of different colors here. The water being clear, probably shad. Watermelon shad is one of my favorites. Tennessee shad is another one that just works great. So what we're doing is we're got our backs towards the bank and we're fishing out towards the center. Structure right. fishing. Structure fishing. With crankbaits and we're going to try to find them. That's right. Get a school and start to catch them. That's right. And it, yeah, you know, I, I tell people all the time about this type of fishing, which is structure fishing. It's kind of like big game hunting. I mean, right. you're doing a lot of hunting to try to find that sweet spot. You know, that mm -hmm. big school of bass where you're going to sit there and catch fish after fish after fish. And that right there, that is the key to it, that crankbait. The crankbait. You bet. Well, let's do it. Let's go get them. Isn't it amazing how far television has come? in just two short decades. I look at that footage and I remember it like yesterday, but it seems so old. But the lessons that Mark taught me that day still apply to offshore fishing, whether it's pre-spawn, summertime, like we were doing in this episode, fall fishing, winter, it doesn't matter. Anytime that you have your back to the bank, this applies. So we're going to go ahead and go over and break down in detail what Mark taught me that day so I can pass it on to you. The first thing that I want to get across that Mark really emphasized is that we do lots of searching before we actually do some catching. And to give you an idea, when we were filming this show and up in this creek channel that we were investigating, we were throwing this crankbait for three to four hours before we ever caught a single fish. 
Now let's think about that for one second. Three to four hours before we ever caught a single fish. Before that day, I would have moved locations. I would have put on a different lure. I guess what I'm trying to say is I never would have given it that much time. But Mark was confident that there was going to be a big school of bass hanging on the ledge of this creek channel somewhere. We just had to find it. So we started at one end of it and kept working our way farther and farther up the creek channel. And it took a long, long time. So that's the first thing that we want to learn is when you're fishing for offshore fish, it can be a lot of searching before you do catching. The second thing that I learned that day is don't dismiss that little fish when you're looking for a big school. So Mark finally caught probably a 10 or 12 inch bass on this lure and he pulled it up and he looks over at me. He goes, Steve, we've got him. We found him. And I'm thinking to myself, we found them. They're just a little 10 or 12 inch fish. So he puts that fish back in the lake and I'm thinking to myself, man, I would just keep on going. We're looking for bigger ones, right? Well, Mark parked us right on this particular location and we proceeded to catch somewhere the 20 to 30 fish on this series five crankbait. We just went to town on them and one thing that we learned is after we fished through some of the smaller ones, we started to catch better fish. Okay, those two pounders, three pounders, four pounders. The size of our fish actually increased as we went. So that's the second thing to remember when you're fishing for offshore fish, structure fish, and you catch a little one, investigate that spot. There could be some big ones down there with it. The third thing that I want to focus on that I learned from Mark on this particular day is when bass are schooled up tight like this, they are going to be using a very small area or could be using a very small area. Mark actually said on camera to the viewers, he said, boy, if you cast 10 feet to either side of that spot, you don't get bit. The two of us were casting to a really, really, really small location and if you were just a little bit off of that you were not going to catch any fish whatsoever or not get bit so they were hanging on something very particular now with today's advanced electronics we probably could have gone through with a side imaging and maybe there was a, a boulder sitting right there on a ledge that was the size of this table possibly and that's where that school was hanging out but you've got to make sure that you hit that specific target your casts have to be accurate and it doesn't hurt to hit that target from multiple angles. So that's the third thing that I learned from Mark on that particular day. The next thing that we focused on, and probably some of you already know this, is that when you get a school of bass, when you find a school and you catch one or two, it kind of turns on that feeding frenzy and they all get fired up. As a matter of fact, there was one segment here in the show where I was bringing a fish up to the boat and there was two or three other bass right there with it trying to take this bait out of that one's mouth. Well, as a bass angler, that is like amazing to get an entire school so fired up that they are trying to steal bait away from each other. So when you finally locate that school and they get activated, boy, it is time to catch them. The next thing that I learned from Mark Davis on this particular day is extremely important and I've applied it to my fishing over the next two decades all the way up to today. And that is when you get on a school of fish and that bite eventually slows down, that bite eventually stops. I mean, when we were hammering them with this crankbait for you know 20 to 30 minutes, eventually they're gonna get tired of seeing it and turn off that bite. So what he did is he had a Carolina rig ready to go and we just had a small little four inch french fry or centipede uh, that you would call it a typical do nothing kind of a worm similar to like a stick bait or a Senko style bait. And then we took these Carolina rigs and put them back out there and on our first cast with a Carolina rig 
we each caught one. We doubled up on our very first cast and we got that bite fired up and activated again and we proceeded to catch those fish for another 20 to 30 minutes, no longer on the crankbait, but on the Carolina rig. So when you get a school of fish fired up and that bite dies down or eventually stops, go with a more subtle presentation and odds are you're gonna get that bite activated all over again. So we spent three to four hours searching for the school of fish and then we proceeded to catch them non-stop for almost an hour. I don't know about you, but I would trade that three hours of searching or hunting for a one hour of catch, 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 catch nonstop. I would make that trade every single time I get out there on the water. But what was the most important thing that I learned is 99% of us would give up before we actually found that school. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we fish for three or four hours with it without a bite. When we're searching for that offshore school, we're probably going to stop, move to another place on the lake, put a different lure on, whatever it might be, we're, we're probably going to give up. We might even give up structure fishing altogether and just go start beating the bank again, looking for visible cover. So that was huge as far as the mindset goes. And then the other most important important thing I learned was that when you catch that little fish, even though it may not be what you're looking for, it could release the location of a pile of a huge school that's got some big old bass down there in it. So that just really changed my mindset as an angler and know that I'm when I'm using this deep diving crankbait that I'm in the search mode, I'm searching and searching and searching. And we've talked about in other videos that every cast that comes back empty, when you're looking for those structure fish, those offshore fish, you're one cast closer to locating them. Well, I hope that you found this information useful. I know when I left the water that day, when Mark and I parted ways and shook hands and I thanked him for spending the day with us and he, and he pulled his boat up the ramp and away he went back home, that particular day changed me, changed my mindset as an angler for ever. And because of that, I've been able to locate structure fish offshore fish that I know I never would have located if I hadn't have spent that day with him and he was teaching me. And that is the great thing about bass fishing is we can learn something from everybody, whether somebody's only been fishing three or four years or 30 or 40 years, they may have picked up a little trick and we can apply that to our own fishing as well. And that's what makes this sport so great. So I hope that you give offshore fishing and structure fishing a chance this year. You know, with the advanced electronics, it's much easier than it was before, but just know it's gonna take lots of searching, lots of hunting before you find that big school of fish. Hey, don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know what a difference it's going to make in their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.